Welcome to another episode of 10x Marketer Podcast. Today we have Hamid with us. He has done some great work in semantic SEO and we would be discussing some important and practical SEO strategies around building the topical map, improving the semantics of your website and also improve your search engine ranking. If you are coming here for the first time, make sure you subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Apple or Spotify, wherever you're listening from. We are available on all three podcast channels. So welcome, Hamid. So thanks for inviting me. Okay, so my name is Muhammad Hamid Khan and uh, I'm from Lahore, Pakistan, a city famous for its quality music. And uh, I started as CEO back in 2015 and I've worked with many companies as a full-time employee and helped achieving their growth numbers and I've uh, worked with many big brands like hire like big SaaS companies like Mail Munch and some multi-million dollar e-com brand as well but after uh, we can say like 2019 I've like uh, started learning about semantics and how search engine works and my that kind of interest and passion turned into my, uh, you can say, I'm now, you can say, working in semantic SEO. So uh, I'm like inspired by Bill Slasky and Corey Tukbukur. And uh, I've like, uh, the framework introduced by Corey mainly, I've worked on that. And right now I'm working with some high ticket clients and helping them uh, achieving their uh, growth numbers and building their topic authority. And uh, by providing services like topical maps, semantic briefs, and content writing services. So this is uh, what I do. And uh, yeah, so far. So Hamid, uh, you're quite known for the semantic SEO work that you have been doing. Uh, Why don't you uh, quickly define for my audience what is semantic SEO and how does it work? All right. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank all of the people who've been like following me on uh, my socials and giving me the like kind of affection. So I'm very uh, happy to have such community like that. And uh, okay, so for a newbie, uh, semantic SEO is, you can say, an approach or you can say some uh, smart way to achieve higher rankings by understanding the main challenges of a search engine and helping or understanding the SEO from more search engine perspective and aligning all the activities around that specific uh, uh, search engine challenges and problems. So basically, uh, let me interpret it further when it comes to uh, SEO or website management, what we have to do, we publish a specific type of content network around a specific type of query network targeting query network in order to achieve the topical authority state and topical authority state works differently for different knowledge domains like for example there's knowledge domain like uh, health like some supplements knowledge domain some more like food so we beat the competition right and we publish more semantically optimized content network and more you can say relevant with relevant and accurate information or in simple words high quality information content network so machine can understand all content in a more faster and cheaper way and serve the content to its user to satisfy the need simply need is basically the query so this is what we do in semantic so this is a, basically a process or approach of publishing a very high quality semantic content network Okay, so uh, my next question is, how is different from the traditional SEO approach that we have been using so far? Okay, so it's a quite, uh, I think, relevant thing. I mean, uh, most of the people are like still, uh, I mean, they're saying that the semantics working on the same approach that been introduced uh, even like the uh, before the years, for example, and uh, it's like working on the same methodology by just changing the names of the terminologies or the process names. So I think I should clear here right now. Semantics is basically uh, more is more tend or you can say towards understanding the 
behavior of the users from search engine's point of view. This all study we say in semantics is query semantics to understand how your users behave or search specific terms or uh, around specific outcomes on Google and we and we pivot that specific outcome and then connect all the context, verbs or behaviors or attributes or queries around that specific topic or outcome and then we map everything together. But in traditional SEO, traditional SEO, like I've been also doing traditional SEO before and uh, what traditional SEO, one main thing that separates traditional SEO is traditional SEO mainly focus on the quantity. I mean, like they, the experts tend to claim that if you publish like more articles, if you create more backlinks, if you, if your article length is more in terms of words, or if you put more links, or if, if you put more keywords, more headings, then you will be ranking better. But this is not the case in semantics. Uh, in simple words, a search engine, you have to be more qualitative than your competitors, not in terms of the numbers, but in terms of the quality. And search engines prefer or search engine uh, calculates the cost first in order to rank a specific type of query network or specific type of knowledge domain. So you have to prioritize what matters for search engine instead of what matters for you basically. So this is the main difference. And in one short example, I will I would like to give you, for example, if you're like publishing a page, you are in normally like in traditional SEO, what people do, they simply uh, copy what uh, already been uh, the top competitors are doing in terms of they export their keywords, their headings, and they just within that circle, within that uh, bubble, they do everything around that specific competitors. But in semantics, what we do, we reinvent the wheel. We follow everything, the knowledge coming from Google patents, we basically, and if, if we have like understood what, how search engines operate, like the crawling, not just from crawling indexing, how they have stored the knowledge is how they're representing the information. Then from that perspective, we figure out what matters for search engine and competitors looking at the competitors for authority hacking. That's just a part of semantic SEO. Okay, so I think that answers this question. Now, let's say if someone wants to build a topical authority for their website, what is the first thing they have to do? What is the starting point? Can you explain the process uh, maybe in a step-by-step -step guide kind of situation? All right, so topical authority, building topical authorities basically starts with understanding the current situation of the website. For example, uh, let's say a website is 10 years old right and a website is starting from scratch at in both cases what we normally try to do to find a specific entity that is that we will be using or will be creating a content network in the future for example if a website that is like 10 year old and has like published around uh, around 2000 pages what we try to figure out from the existing data the historical data maybe from the search console in simple words we try we try to check that okay what the main queries or the main attributes or the main entities google is ranking this website against so for an old website we try to uh, get our hands dirty and figure out what will be like the future uh, entity around which the topical map will be built so first step is always creating a topical map so topical map is basically a list of concepts or contexts you can say not just list of keywords with their volume like in traditional seo is a list of concepts or contexts that are centered around a central entity and prioritized by different types of attributes and it has in simple words, a core section and outer section and uh, more uh, components uh, it has like a topical map has like a central entity uh, around which the topical map will be uh, will be built and uh, a source context, then central search intent and then the core section and outer section. This is normally a topical map consists of. 
So the topical map is the first step when uh, going for achieving the topical authority state. And after the topical map is built, we prioritize, okay, this chunk of topic, like 50, if you have like 500 pages, you're going to, going to publish, you prioritize, okay, these 20 or 30 needs to be published first because they are targeting a specific type of query template or attribute or specific type of behavior or context, for example, and you publish your topical maps in chunk. And for publishing, definitely for each page, you create semantics briefs. That's another chapter in semantic SEO, long practical thing. And by, by the way, I've been publishing uh, some videos, uh, recording some videos of this as well. And then after creating the briefs, uh, we normally write content based on semantics. So that's another a very long uh, C basically you can say in terms of information. So yeah, so this is a short roadmap for uh, achieving the topical authority set. And once all things are like published, like the first 20, 30 pages are published on the website, you wait for a certain type of, uh, uh, you can say some time to help Google come your site in the first crawl and understand and then put your website in some time of in some type of testing phase and then give you assign you the topical authority state around a certain type of query network for a certain amount of time after uh, beating a certain type of for example website all right so my next question is around uh, the topical authority uh, or the topical map itself like uh, when you say there is a traditional keyword research and then there is a topical research, how both the things are different from each other and uh, when you are building uh, or when you are searching for a uh, topical map, uh, how do you really research on the competitors? Mm -hmm. Because you are suggesting the traditional way of researching like the keyword and volume is not so important for semantic SEO, right? I think there is some type of... Uh certainty or importance for volume in uh, semantics like the search demand we normally say because we have to prioritize search demand definitely but making our decisions all around that specific type of metric which is volume is not always give you the whole picture or whole outcome that you want to achieve yeah so getting back to your question uh, how to uh, build a topical map and how it differs from different uh, for example, uh, how it differs from traditional keyword research and how to incorporate competitor research in building a topical map. So as I mentioned, first I explain like for people like what traditional keyword research normally means. It's simply about uh, searching your main seed phrase on tools like SEMrush, href and exporting all the data which tool has, not what is like actually being searched tool not has like all uh, uh, all all kind of data that user is searching tool has some specific type of data okay so it's like just uh, using some certain third-party tools and uh, relying on those tools in terms of the phrases that maybe your competitors are targeting or maybe that tools database has and you just export those things and you just maybe prioritize okay this based on this volume you have to publish this and then this then this without any uh, symmetry uh, symmetric approach without any synchronous without any for example holistic approach you just go left and right and without any for example thematic approach for machines but in semantics what we do normally is uh, one one more time. I would say you pick a central entity, and then around that central entity, you capture all the behaviors of the users of your target users around your central entity. So before target users, basically you figure out your TAM target uh, addressable market, and then you figure out your buyer personas, your ICPs, and from those after. Uh, deep diving into your customer research definitely then you figure out what this customers might be searching on google in terms of the for example uh, attributes in terms of the context or verbs for example right let me give you an example i think to make uh, my things more uh, aligned with, with the user's uh, mind so basically i would like to give an example here uh, for example, if you are like, uh, if your source context is about renting chairs, you're like just 
renting chairs for specific type of events, right? And uh, which means that your users renting here is the verb or the behavior around that specific outcome, which is chair. So chair is an outcome or entity. There might be different behaviors like selling, buying, renting, inquiring, comparing, purchasing, or simply exploring, learning. Everything might be associated, all these behaviors might be associated with the chair. So you have to figure out what your ideal customer, what behaviors or what verbs he might be searching on Google. Then you connect your research with those verbs or behaviors. Okay, so you figure out, okay, these five, that's basically a normal thing in uh, uh, a central search intent, what a central search intent normally do, normally does. So you figure out all those behaviors, then you connect the competitor research and connect with those behaviors, not just you follow what everything your competitors are doing. Okay. And then you figure out from a query semantics perspective, from search engine's perspective, okay, these behaviors, activities, users might be performing. Then from a language perspective, like lexical relations, you figure out that as well. And uh, in simple words, this is, I mean, a normally topical map takes like 15 to 20 days, sometimes more. So it's a very long and lengthy process. So this is how we uh, create a topical map. And then we filter it further based on attribute prominence, relevance, and popularity and lot more criteria uh, based on the business overall objective. Okay, so once you have the topical map, what is the next step for you? So topical map is ready. Maybe for a client I've been working for, like I've created a topical map. Next, I'll ask the client, okay, what is your main priority section of the topical map maybe you want to go with specific for example uh, i normally give this type of example that uh, if uh, if client is selling for example car paint right car paint this is the source context selling car paint and uh, definitely he will figure out the most closest entity related to his source context so car would be maybe you can say the more uh, most closest ent entity okay so he's is built he's chosen car as an central entity then there might be some different attributes for car like car uh, tires car engine car lights and car maintenance car history car brands etc etc for example and car paints obviously so if I build topical map, for example, and covering all these attributes and uh, maybe based on the client suggestion, we'll prioritize first the car paint attribute because that's more related to the business model or source context of what client is offering. So we'll first of all, we decide which specific type of section or attribute we need to go first. Then the next step is to create brief documents. And when it comes to brief document, we try to decide in order to saving cost and time and obviously helping Google more understanding the information what the semantic content network is about. We go for query templates and the good thing about query templates is we can cre create a specific type of brief template, document template. Like for example, if uh, a, a document might be like uh, best car paint uh, for x brand right or you can say there's uh audi is the model right and there's uh audi is the brand for example and they're like different models in audi right so what we can do is we create a specific document brief document around all those models that are coming in audi brand like best car paint for x audi model best car paint for y audi model best car paint for z audi model this is how we can save our time and create a document template and uh, first of all this is how we what we decide and then we create unique brief templates as well like the root document that obviously needs to go like uh, for example uh, car paint or uh, anything that your root is so then we create like briefs and uh, after creating briefs we definitely go with content creation okay so uh 
what is the content creation process in semantic seo and how is it different from the traditional one do you first analyze uh, the content that is already there on the website and start by improving it or just uh, start creating the new content straight away i first uh, as i mentioned uh, what normally i do instead of like saying client okay we need to build this we need to build this we need to build xyz i apart from everything on top of everything first of all i audit the existing site i figure out what needs to be done in order to get the recovery state of the for example if the site is old most of the cases clients come to me okay they say website has a lot of like traffic in the past maybe one year back and now the traffic is down due to some maybe algorithmic uptake or something like that so i figure out what is the best solution for the website so in terms of if a website has pages published we try to figure out with content configuration and we like update the existing content and we align the new topical map that that will be building on new semantic content network uh, with the existing pages that are already published we try to connect those because without bridging the information without bridging the context with each other without the proper flow google won't be able to understand your site in a better way so we try to bridge information and then uh, basically uh, i figure out for example in terms of the content audit as well the technical seo audit as well in content audit we figure out okay which pages needs to be deleted and that's another chapter how we decide which pages needs to be uh, updated or refreshed in terms of the information or media and everything and which pages needs to be merged or consolidated together and have been like uh, added through redirects three of one and which pages that needs to be leave as it is for example so these four things i figure out and then based on those things the pages that needs update we do content configuration for those pages like simply without uh, diluting the existing page rank or the authority or the topical relevance or the contextual coverage or the context vector that been uh targeted on that specific page we try to in uh, keep that thing intact and we try to uh, improve the existing document in terms of all the behaviors activities that we have been searching before okay and uh, one thing is content configuration and then one thing is publishing new documents that are like introduced in our topical map so in terms of content writing getting back to your question uh like content creation is now we figure out okay objective first of all what's the main objective of the page then we figure out what is the macro context of that document and what are the micro context for example of that specific document and then we create uh, and definitely the briefs template which is uh, ready which which is now ready from the su side the writers are uh, being trained properly on semantics and on those briefs how to cover that brief uh, how to write based on that briefs so in simple words uh, let me give you couple of ingredients that we focus on in a semantic content number one is uh, from a machine perspective we try to do everything responsive the information needs to be responsive for machine and information responsiveness is a concept basically uh, is coming from google patents for example information retrieval information extraction basically is an you can say an important uh, concept coming from information retrieval and information uh, extraction is uh, uh, like extracting information around around, uh, around a specific subject or uh, uh, within a corpus so basically information responsiveness uh, is basically we make our information responsive for machines and uh, there are like multiple factors that come into information responsive uh, nest for example the accuracy of your information the completeness of your information the uniqueness of your information and for example the reputation of your information and uh, for example the accessibility of your information and uh, and for example you make your information responsive uh, around a specific subject for machines to read your document and within spending less cost understand more context or meanings or extract more information from your from your document and then uh, instead of like for example reading the whole document you sh you should be able to help machine to understand your document in a very faster and cheaper way as compared to your competitors or your search documents that are ranking for example you're trying to beat 
so information responsiveness is the one key component and one other thing we basically focus on semantic triples in our content like entity attribute value okay this is the entity and this is its attribute and this is the value and uh, we it's all about helping machine to understand like a child five year old child for example okay this entity and this attribute has this value we create all the pairs of that things and then we do question answer pairing like a passage indexing uh, google patent uh, uh, concept coming from uh, passage ranking uh, coming from google patent and uh, the passage is indexing that's been uh, normally what google is doing you search a question it pair a specific answer and rank on the feature snippet on top of everything on zero search result for example so what we try to do in our content we uh, optimize we create question answer pairs first of all we extract for example, we get the seed query, we turn those seed queries into questions format and those question format, we create answer pair for those question format and then we try to rank those on machines. So again, this is going very technical and deep and by the way, I've, I've created a complete roadmap or system like uh, to train a new person from language point of view on all these methodologies in order to write a better content based on semantic perspective. So I think this is the whole overview of everything. Okay, so uh, the other question is uh, mostly uh, see semantic SEO is uh, slightly technical as compared to the traditional form of SEO or content creation. Yeah, it is. And for any industry, the content is created by a subject matter expert, which most of the time is not the technical SEO or semantic SEO expert. So how do you create a content brief that explains everything in the simplest possible form for any person who is writing the content for you i think uh, before working on a project i've like by the way created an sops like first of all we get the smes uh, interviews as well sometimes the already customer research that been done by the brand we figure out almost the first two three days we uh, understand or uh, simply learn about this specific topic i mean again some topics like uh for example medicine topics some for example topics like that has something to do with yeah, like your money your life topics for example i mean uh first of all my priority is to find smes subject matter experts and train them uh based on the semantics framework and the good thing most of the time normally what clients they already have a team something like that they understand the business from a score or the knowledge domain they've been working on i mean they, i just train those people who already has a business knowledge had good understanding of the uh, uh or the specific questions of the business or the industry i just train them and they would be able to write that kind of content right so 50% of the job is done in terms of the information. Now the semantics or the optimization, they learn and they're simply able to write content. But for a newbie, that's the real challenge comes in. They know the semantics, they know the rules, but they don't have that kind of idea. So for that, we have, uh, we what we do, we try to uh, find some research papers, find some courses maybe from LinkedIn Learning and find some more authoritative websites that are publishing good content or some authoritative factual information around that specific industry. We try to read those information first of all. Again, the mainly the writers who are going to write the content. And then after a week of training, then, and definitely they have already the training of semantics and the framework approach. They just get trained on uh, the business model or the simply the industry they've been going to write content for and then it's a win-win situation so again it's still challenge we try to review the content uh, back and forth from the client sometimes as well to understand if it's aligned in terms of the business information because semantics is obviously line and client don't know uh, very much about is it aligned for semantics so this is uh, I think a go-to approach in terms of aligning the uh, semantics work with the facts or with the uh, with the client's objective for example so Hamid my next question is related to uh, the semantic SEO is uh, what mistakes 
do you see people usually make when they create a topical map and how they can avoid that yeah related to mistakes uh, first of all i was I was also struggling with those things number one is <coughs> to to prioritize what matters for a website uh, based on the current situation or the objectives of the client in terms of like for example creating topical map which is obviously the first component of like semantic content network so they f- they try to like uh, they, they struggle most of the time most of the semantics people who are like just learning or implementing semantic SEO they try they struggle based on the objective what really they have to research or publish in terms of content and what not so that comes in prioritization before prioritization researching information I think uh, researching information is another thing by the way uh, the main problem here is they have all kind of, for example, knowledge bases in terms of the information on their, for example, simply in, in Google Sheet, like 30,000, 40,000 uh, contexts or concepts are there around specific entity. Because entity could be bigger, there would be more context. If entity could be smaller, there would be less context. The next thing is which specific context they need to associate on the website and publish first and which not and then uh, the prioritization one more time so this is the main uh, mistakes or you can say the challenge i've been observing and uh, and now the solution is simply you first decide uh, your objective whether you want to if you are like for example a new site or if you are like on the other hand one site is basically selling a specific type of service right or product so you align the topics with your objective if you just want more traffic or historical data or and you have a new site definitely you can go with everything but then you prioritize the most prominent attributes first i mean that defines the important definitions of an entity other than on the other hand if your source context is about selling a specific if you have a proper source context like you're selling something or offering some consultancy anything you prioritize from business perspective okay this topic needs to be published first or this con- uh, documents needs to be published first so th- this is the solution basically and uh, on specific example we can maybe see if and else statement something like that and uh, the other mistake which is very i guess important here to address is people focus on macro semantics too much and let me put a condition here for example if a subject is very has not a lot of content like around thousand contexts are there only for example almost all of the competitors have covered the things that been uh, present currently in that specific type of subject you cannot maybe differentiate a lot in terms of macro semantics your topics will be almost 80 or 70 percent will be overlapping with your competitor's topical coverage in that case what mostly people miss is the micro semantics the micro semantics mainly actually helps you to rank your content network by playing with each and every byte pixel each and every word you configure everything together and that overall contributes to the overall success of a semantic content network or the outcome you want to achieve so micro semantics is the real game changer that mostly people are missing so these two things i think are uh, the main challenges of the problem or mistakes people may be making currently okay so my next question is let's say somebody is just starting with the semantic seo they have no prior knowledge or they may have worked to some extent in the traditional seo approach what should be what would be your advice where should they start from what should be their next steps uh, can you outline a journey for them mm-hmm. yeah if i consider myself i'm just starting and uh, based on my experience definitely i will try to uh, map a picture uh, for for a newbie actually there's there are multiple disciplines that connect that if you connect everything those discipline together then you can be a semantic seo expert i mean uh 
and the main thing come here is understanding the search engines number one thing so you have to at any cost first of all you have to understand how search engines work or how search works for that you can deep dive into google even own guideline google search central for example understanding how what google's documentation is saying obviously i'm not saying you should and uh, you should only read that that's a good starting point understanding the google own documentation and some important google patents like uh, not patents some guidelines as well some documents like google quality data guidelines some more like on information retrieval some more like query parsing for example you understand these kind of things and after that you can maybe start with some uh, linguistics and like language how language work because language plays a very important or pivoted role in semantics so language or linguistics is one of the most important component and in language or in linguistics we have like nlp we have like computational linguistics we have we have to like then understand those uh, how those nlps and languages working together how simply a uh, machine extract meaning from a text written by a human this is the uh, like real challenge which uh, for for a machine so basically if you figure out what is for example what are the main challenges for a machine to uh in in, under, in in understanding those texts then you can maybe make your strategy better and then there are more things like llm large language models you have to understand those once you got the basics then you go to some semantic seo proper uh, channel like uh, maybe it's like holistic seo dot digital the course uh, i would highly recommend the course launched by core first you read his case studies watch his youtube videos and understand what are the basics then you go for the paid course as well and uh, these learning sources and experts the industry leaders were also helping the community in uh, grabbing the con grabbing or grasping the information around semantic you can follow those as well so this is a good roadmap for anyone who's just starting All right, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Hamid, for uh, joining us and sharing such a valuable uh, knowledge with our audience. Uh, we would look forward to have you again in future, if possible. Thanks once again. Thank you for joining, and 